Hey everyone, welcome to this next section. And here we're gonna take a look at keyframes. Like I'm gonna play these animations and uh, explain a little bit. So you can see there, uh, the trees are moving apart. That's like panning to the side and then also zooming in a little bit. Uh, and then here you see the, the moon in the background. Uh, also moving, coming from below, and the, the only thing that's a little different is the fading in, changing to night. You can do that with the opacity, like we're changing the opacity and some layers. You know, explain how it, exactly, but pretty much this works the same as the camera. They have a few extra things that uh, that make it better. So I'll get into that in a second. So now uh, I'm gonna make a new document. And I'll just do the same thing. So to show you exactly uh, how easy it is. So I'm gonna delete this. For this one, we don't need to draw anything. I'm gonna use some of the same tools, same uh, materials from Clip Studio. I'm gonna play the same tree again. Maybe I'm gonna make it smaller. And also I'm gonna flip it so it, it looks a little different. So yeah, the same tree and that's it. The moon, we'll be bring the moon in a second. Uh, so you can just uh, click here. This is the enable keyframes. So when you're in this layer, uh, now you click here. Now this makes it so it's as if I added a camera to it. So now I get this uh, same options, the transform stuff. Uh, you know, I can just click here to add the point, whatever I am in the timeline. So if I go here, I can just do that. The same as the camera. Uh, but I'm gonna go to the beginning and add that. And we'll talk about the different ones uh, in another section, explain more. But in this one, you don't need to worry about it. Um, make sure it's in linear, which is uh, it's more simple. So let's say I'm gonna add it there. It's gonna be the starting position, or maybe the starting position is here. So now this tree, I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, notice how like, I can't really do it because it works per track. Like you gotta, each layer pretty much, uh, you can convert into a keyframe. Like it makes the track a keyframe. So even though I did it for that one, I gotta do it again for the next one. And then add it for that one. So now this one is, so now this one is the starting point for this tree. And it's gonna be right there and I can then move it and little things like that. Uh, and then same for the city, you can use uh, the background, you can add another one. So I like to do that, if, especially if you start from the beginning, it's good to do that and like set their starting positions uh, and then you can choose where they're going after. So let's say we're gonna choose, uh, let's say frame 62, whatever. So it has a, it's showing me here uh, my layer so I can pan, like it's gonna move to the side and then it's gonna get bigger. So it's gonna do both of those things at the same time. All right, so let me see a quick preview. See like the tree's moving away. Uh, so, so you see how easy it is to do this kind of animation. You can just tell, okay, start here. And then in this frame, I want it to, to be uh, in this position, right? Okay, so I'm gonna do that. So now this both both of these trees are moving from the starting position to their final position, and then it's gonna do that for the keyframes, which is pretty good, pretty simple. Uh, and you can do this with any kind of drawing; it doesn't have to be vector or anything like that. You can just even like pencil. Even you can scan your own uh, work and. It will move it so i'm gonna make the city move a little bit because remember the, the background moves less so you create that illusion and just like just a little bit like that like you can barely notice it so it's like a subtle like zooming in so you can see how quickly i did that right like i just three different layers uh yeah just move them a little bit yeah pretty simple nothing too crazy just uh enable the key so you just enable the keyframe and then you just add it here uh, in the add keyframe. You just add in that pretty simple. 
So in Clip Studio, like uh, even in animation here, you have all these effects, uh, yeah, the correction layers like hue and different, you can change all of this stuff, right? Like go here, uh, go to layer, correction, new correction layer, and then have these different options and uh, you can change, you know, uh, things. And these are, these are like non-permanent changes. So these are some effects that work as long as this layer, this new layer exists. So I'll show you in a second. So I'll do it like that. So you see, yeah, I get this effect layer and if I turn it off, it just goes back to normal. So this is just like a little effect. So it would be really cool if I could just, for example, if I lower the opacity, right? Uh, it goes back to normal, it goes to zero. So it, it would be really cool if I could just make this start from zero opacity. And then as it's moving, as it's zooming in, right? then I, uh, I can make it add this effect like uh, with the opacity right that would be pretty simple like we know like, like i showed you before you can make things uh, disappear let's so say you make uh make this this random effect if i do that let's say i add this uh opacity right, at zero and then here Another one, but I'm gonna make the opacity a hundred. It's gonna look like it's gonna start at zero, and that when I play it, it's gonna appear. So I told it to start with the opacity at zero, and then here it goes to a hundred. So it's gonna fade in. It's pretty cool. So we could do the same thing for this effect, but Clip Studio kind of doesn't want us to do that. Uh, if you go here, you see opacity doesn't appear. Uh, which kind of sucks. Even if you go here, it doesn't really show up. It doesn't show the opacity. But this is like a little workaround that you can do. And I don't know if they meant it like this. So you can actually just put it in a folder. Yeah, at first, it looks like oh, the effect doesn't work when you're in a folder. But make sure you go here. So instead of normal, it's putting through, which means whatever is inside the folder comes through. Like the effect of that will come out and affect the layers. If I have it normal, it only affects things inside and doesn't let the effect do anything to these layers, uh, to these uh, trees and stuff like that. But I wanted to affect those layers, so I go here, just put it through, and now it does work. So the main thing is that if you want to add these effects, you have you have to add them to a folder, uh, make them through, so it shows through, and, and then make the folder change the opacity. So I guess uh, it's a little workaround, I think. Uh, um, I don't know why you can't really do it on this one uh, by itself, like straight up. But you gotta do this little workaround and things like that. Which is fine. I think it's uh, still pretty good. And uh, something cool too is that you can just keep adding effects here, like multiple effects. So uh, it's not a big deal now. It's, th it's good because now you're organizing all of them. So let me just add something else. Just gonna see what works, what gets the look that you want. Uh, you can see there uh, something that I did that worked pretty well before was this one, the grading map. So you can see you can add all of that and this different one so this this one is like night. Oh, maybe it's too much. But you can always lower the opacity of the effect itself. So that whole effect, those all those effects are coming through. And I can just say, okay, at the beginning and add that, but the opacity is gonna be at zero. And then here is gonna be at 100 and notice that if I just click on the opacity I get this little line there like a like a little arrow if you click the plus sign there's this extra track down there that says opacity so kind of the position and the opacity kind of work separately uh, like you see if you click here like the position like if you click okay I'm clicking there but you can just click here if you click here 
See, you just add everything except the opacity. For you. So, on top of that, you gotta add the opacity, or you can always turn this off, and you get that, like the little arrow cast showing there's something under it. Uh, but I can just add this too, so uh, just to make it more clear. So let's just play it now. Okay, uh, I guess I messed up. Zero opacity. Okay, zero opacity still. So I gotta change it. So I put it to hundred. So I'm gonna now it's gonna play up. So you can see it's changing and now it's kind of like darker. Uh, something I noticed, I think it, when you do this kind of effect, it makes like the it just it kind of slows down the playback sometimes. Like it gets like that little laggy. I mean, I'm also recording, so that that this, this is making my computer a little slower. But I noticed doing this kind of effect, maybe it's too much work. Uh, kind of rendering or that like fading in those effects I don't know if it happens to you uh, if you see like slowing down it's probably something like that okay uh, so that's kind of the main, the main thing right and now the moon and the moon is kind of interesting because uh, it will help us do something else so uh, let's do the full moon now this was a little different before so see the moon here uh, something about it is that if I put it under it then it's gonna get that effect uh, and then the moon's gonna look kind of weird in the background but I want it to be like the same color like shiny so what I, w I guess I have to do is uh, I'm gonna make a you can create a mask and like around these buildings uh, to hide the uh, the moon pretty much so the way it works you can uh, hold the uh, command command and click here to select this layer so now all that's selected and then on the moon layer I'm gonna right click here uh, and then go to uh, layer mask and then mask selection so what it does is you see if you can see here it has like the shape of the buildings. Yeah, it's too small. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll change it over here. Let's see, thumbnail size, RG. See, now I have this layer mask, uh, the shape of the buildings. And what it does is the, they moves independently. So I can move the layer, the moon to this area, like going down, and it hides the moon because the, uh, the mask is there. So if I move, I move the moon, the, the mask stays there. As long as you have the selection, uh, you can just do that. So you see selecting area that you wanna hide. And then, okay, mask selection. Now the moon won't show up in the area. So it's pretty sick, it's pretty good. Uh, the moon doesn't have to start at the beginning. Uh, I could just put it, let's say, uh, when the star is getting dark. Let's say here. First, make this the uh, keyframe. Turn it to like enable keyframe. So now I can add the keyframe. Uh, add it here, and then uh, let's say the starting point is gonna be down here. Like you can't see it. The ending point is gonna be there. So, so at this point in the timeline, I'm gonna just you can just move it, move the the moon again, and it will automatically add that point there. You can also just uh, like add it and then move it. The moon's coming out too fast. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to move all those frames. So like this, not moving. Okay, I'm gonna move this one too. Okay, so move all of those uh, just so the moon comes out a little slower. I guess and also what about the stars uh, the stars actually is the same thing so I'm gonna just pick one of these effect brushes this uh, sparkle and you can just add it like that or what if you have stars brush you can just do that now nah, so it's here we gotta turn this to, to keyframe and I'm gonna make it and we can press the object tool so it shows us this stuff 
opacity I'm gonna make it zero then maybe even a little after the gravity uh, opacity a hundred and it's not too difficult you see uh, after you get the basic uh, idea of how the keyframes work you can do a lot of things so this is really useful especially for backgrounds and little things like that um, yeah so hopefully this explains it uh, a little bit how you can use all different things and moving them to the side zooming in uh, a little bit of the masking there uh, also these effects so you can like fade in the different look with the uh, adjustment layers and yeah then we're gonna look a little bit more into the other stuff uh, the hold linear and smooth uh, but for now that's gonna be it for this section hopefully uh, you can do the same just you, you have the same materials just uh, do it maybe change the day maybe it gets like a you know like a sunset look right you can just ch uh, change the color to something else uh, yeah, so uh, have fun with this one. Yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. So, all right, so that's it for the, this one. Um, see you in the next one.